All right, perfect. Um, I see quite a few of us have joined and still uh, people are joining in. So in the interest of time, I think, uh, and to keep our time box, let's get started. Thank you everyone for joining this webinar. Um, it touches a very important topic and that's why you registered for this uh, webinar. It talks about lean portfolio management. Um, today I'm joined by my co-host for the session, Anand Rajmurthy, and I think the man himself needs no introduction and he will provide more introduction when he moved to his section. Um, but I'll go first and I'll introduce myself. Hi, I am Pranjal. Um, and some of you, if not all, would know me um, that I'm part of Scaled Agile Inc. I'm the country manager for India and ASEAN, been with Scaled Agile for, I would say, two and a half years now. Um, and um, you know, just so that before, before we get started, um, we are recording this just to let you know. And also, we will be taking questions during the webinar. Um, you can use the chat window or the Q&A option over here on your Zoom um, to you know, keep on seeding in the questions as and when you have them, all right? So let's get started. Um, I just want to start with a quick reminder um, to me and to all of us that a few days ago, I was listening in to a webinar late evening, which was delivered by Stanford Design School. Uh, the two professors over there were talking about innovation. And what struck me was a comment from one of the professors who mentioned that during the time of this pandemic, when the businesses are slow and low, most of the businesses are being disrupted. The fatal mistake which some of the leaders might be making is to focus on the output. What he further expanded upon is that let's not focus so much on the output as to the input because the output is in direct proportion of the input and the input was, uh, is your portfolio of your product and services and solutions and value streams, which help you define and identify the risks and pivot to a new business model, bring in the elements of innovation that will help you um, respond faster to the changing business environment conditions. And I was looking through the examples on the internet um, of the um, companies or the businesses who might have taken that hint. And I think all of us saw this, that Dyson, known as vacuum cleaner company, they built a ventilator in just 10 days. That was awesome, right? Um, there was another such example, which I came across that a manufacturing company, Marlin Steel Wire Products um, in the US, they were able to rack up their new products in response to COVID-19. These guys were essentially creating the wire um, structures uh, for holding the test tubes. And that was really, really critical for the tests to happen, right? So if they don't have those trays with, with those wires around that, then the test tubes can't be um, you know, put into those trays and that will um, impact the amount of testing that different countries in the world could do. So they were able to rack it up quickly. Another example that we saw was from India, how's the world's lowest uh, cost uh, ventilator, which was made in India, which works without electricity. However, at the same time, we also saw examples like these, wherein herds might have fired tens of thousands of employees or IBM and many other such businesses which suffered a significant drop in sales and profits. And when you look at it, and I was again doing some research and looking at some of the industry point, I came across this report from McKinsey, which tells us like what leading companies do differently from the rest. And it clearly talks about on this screen that you have that the companies who are so-called winners on this report by McKinsey they are able to exercise high level of strategic response to the digital change. They were able to quickly pivot their strategy, had strategic agility, and be able to identify which value streams to fund to, and were able to quickly respond to the changes in the business model. You can go ahead and read this report in elaborate in, on McKinsey.com. Um, the problem is that not many people actually are good at it. The leaders like yourself today, um, it's a challenge. We understand that, right? It, only 8% of leaders are good at both the strategy and execution as this Harvard Business Review article says. 
However, there is a solution which we have been using for the past few years, which has helped us. And it has helped so much that it has garnered interest from the best of the industry analysts and the enterprises and different communities. And we call it Scaled Agile Framework. And this is a report which Gartner released last year, wherein Gartner says um, that Scaled Agile Framework is the most used and the most widely considered enterprise Agile Framework. And it compares it against other framework approaches as well. But it puts Scaled Agile Framework at the top and this is the report, which is again available um, in the public forum that you can go and read um, by yourself. Recently, you might have also noticed that Scale Agile Framework, again, for the fourth or the fifth year in the row, is the leader on the 14th State of Agile report, which comes out every year amongst all the scaling methods and approaches. There is reason why the solution has been at the top why it has been adopted by most of the enterprises around the world to create profitable and innovative solutions. And to elaborate on that, I'll hand it over to my colleague, Anand. Anand, over to you. Thanks, Pranjil. Sorry, guys, one second. Okay, so, um, Thanks, Pranjal. I will continue from where Pranjal left. So the next 45 minutes are odd. I'm going to take you through a journey of how a lean portfolio management would look like and some of the challenges that we see in the pro-COVID to the post-COVID era situation. So a quick introduction about myself. I'm with Gladwell Academy and I'm an SPC team and uh, I've delivered about close to about 40 implementing safe classes now since uh, since 2017, December, and I've also delivered quite a few RT classes across the globe. And I enjoy teaching SAFE because I believe SAFE really makes a big difference uh, to the organizations. So the references or the information that I've picked up is all available in this site, and nothing is mine. Everything is derived from the Scaled Agile framework. So, quick agenda of what we would like, what I would like to talk to you about. Some challenge, what is safe portfolio? Some challenges around current portfolios. Then the most important aspect is about it, uh, uh, organizing around value. Then we talk about some aspects about strategy, investment funding stuff. And then we quickly touch upon governance and quickly talk about a quick wrap up on what's next and what is really next. Okay, a quick introduction. A quick introduction. We all know about this picture called Mona Lisa. We all know about 600 years back, uh, the Italian artist Leonardo da Vinci wrote this, uh, gave this painting to the world. It's regarded as one of the best paintings. But some hidden facts about this painting was that Leonardo da Vinci took 22 years to draw this image. And many of us think that at that point in time, when life expectancy was about 70 years, one third of his life has spent in doing it. And we may think he's a lethargic guy. Not only that, he took six long years to draw those lips. So what, what happened? What's the science behind it? As he was starting to paint this drawing, he abandoned his project and studied biology. Before completing biology, he studied optics. Optics. So what happened was, as a part of biology, he learned what is there in the human body. As a part of optics, he learned about refraction, reflection, and he got both optics and biology to create Mona Lisa. So Mona Lisa is not a painting, it's a real life. And that's why it's considered as one of the best paintings of the world. So what, what actually happened with Da Vinci is that he doesn't have a compartment in his brain which talks about physics. He was a physics, biologist, scientist, artist, etc. So he doesn't really have that compartment in his brain. I am a physicist. I'm a biologist. I only look at this. He looked at the painting as a culmination of multiple things. And that's how we can create creativity and innovation in the organization. So what is creativity? Creativity is an ability of an individual or a group of people who can create ideas that are both novel and useful. If an idea is not useful, but only novel, 
an idea is not at all useful but only novel then it's a daydream but if an idea is useful not novel then it is common sense so what is meant by innovation then innovation is an ability for an organization to get this idea into the market so you need to have both creativity and innovation in order to survive which means to say that you need to have both strategy and execution in order to survive in the covid world many organizations are either great in strategy or great in execution but in the covid world post covid world if you really want to survive you need to have a great correlation between the two so what is an enterprise what is a portfolio then many small organizations have one portfolio this safe portfolio essentially develops systems and supports your businesses but large organizations can have multiple safe portfolios if you're talking about uh, a small polyclinic you may have one small portfolio when they're doing some pathological tests but if they expand into something like like uh, x ray machines mr machines and provide these services they may have multiple portfolios one for pathology and for radiology so depending on the size you can define your safe portfolios so what is a safe portfolio a safe portfolio according to me is a placeholder for something called development value streams your development value streams live in these safe portfolios so what does a development value stream do it delivers solutions to systems and a portfolio typically represent a specific area of your enterprise so business units or divisions pathology radiology something like that but a safe portfolio essentially connects your portfolio strategy and execution so what is lean portfolio management three important pillars as i said this competency aligned strategy execution three important pillars are strategy and investment funding how do you maintain operations and portfolio how do you make sure that the portfolio is running as expected and finally governance the beauty of these three pillars are that they are all collaborative in nature it's nothing like my way or highway it is a collaboration between multiple people and we believe that we can't solve the problem alone like a cumulative set of ideas should come and then only we can solve great problems so how should the lpm behave we all know about a gps device you sit in a car you set your destination you set your uh, and start off the gps device exactly gives you the most optimal path to reach your destination the whole concept of doing this gps device giving the calculations in the gps device does is nothing but your pi planning in say the business comes with an objective and we as the the r and d teams i don't call myself as it team anymore we are not it folks we we are equally responsible for creating business impacts so we as problem solving teams create a most economical path now as we start navigating we hit hurdles unexpected cross crosses come in unexpected situations come in and that's when our ability to reroute and still take to the business through its most economical path is the beauty of the lpm so how should this transition happen stop calling yourself as feature teams and we have to transform ourselves as problem solving teams we can't work on requirements we can't work on requirements we have to work on ideas you can't build solutions you have to work on hypothesis and then build solutions you can't directly build solutions anymore focus was always on efficiency let's focus on effectiveness we were running projects silo based projects let's develop end to end products what are some of the traditional portfolio management challenges let's go one by one in some amount of detail the whole concept of portfolio was based on silos now this was this organization wrong no at that point in time we wanted cost optimization so we created silos and we said hey silo this is your this is your budget and give me this money back so we created their own profit and loss for each silos so each silo started working on its own however today we are trying to focus on value optimization so you need to cut across the silos and you know the political boundaries are so strong that you cannot easily get information which leads into delays because of politics we need to get rid of that culture and create a unified culture where all of us have a common goal 
that's what is called as organizing across value streams in fact it is the representation of an agile release stream we always had projects each department created its own project each one of them wanted to prove that i am better than you but end of the day who takes care of your customers and this projects always created problems in funding because a project typically is developed across multiple uh, multiple geographies each of them is a cost center everything is utilization based and people would often throw away things so also our projects run for years together by the time you finish your project probably the market is totally different just imagine pre covid market to post covid market you can't even imagine how post era post covid era would look like so essentially what is happening start stop start syndrome you start something you stop something you start something you stop something you create some sort of some sort of disturbance in the system loss of usable knowledge in clean we call this a scatter waste get a set of people and then you push them out so instead of focusing on projects let's focus value streams people in value streams remain constant so instead of pulling people from various locations and creating a project and then giving sending them back we create a fixed value stream people are sitting there we constantly giving give them work so that they can constantly develop what you call as usable knowledge portfolio management conventional portfolio management in the january you created a huge list of commitments to your business march 12th india had a lockdown what happened to your commitments what happened to your commitments it's completely gone the commitments are out of sync now so creating an annual plan and showing the business that by december we are going to give you this is a very old style you need to start thinking of how do you create strategic agility in your portfolio so forget about the wishful thinking of we completing the project every at the end of the year it's not going to happen you need to understand lack of agility in today's world is loss of business even we have to file bankruptcy the worst case so let's start thinking of rolling wave planning and pi guidance pi cadence and guidance is an excellent opportunity to rebuild strategies at the end of every pi boundary so that we are moving in the right direction even with the pandemic hitting us the amount of work that we would start doing is unlimited we always would say we always would say that work is unlimited you start something without even completing you start keep on starting things however in a lean portfolio management it's all pull mechanism and it is based on your capacity organizations feel that loading an individual 100% would give maximum benefit maximum utilization of minimum resources that was the economics of the last day today it's flow keeping the flow constant and constantly focusing on bottlenecks and ensuring that we constantly be flexible and adaptation to the marketing changes is the need of the day we always had this something called a fancy face gates right fancy face gates and you people were running behind face gates but today we have realized that these k face gates are not really reducing risk they are only creating a false feasibility that things will work because you do a lot of upfront design at the beginning you do a lot of there is a lot of challenges there and hence we always make sure that we go with one point design we assume that the design would work we never understand the means of risk reduction eventually your incremental delivery gives you better economics than your phase gated models because you have more learning cycles you have enhanced learning cycles you have more learning opportunities and decisions is based on economics big upfront commitment we spoke about this beginning of the year you commit and what do you commit you have no idea about your commitment but at the end of the year what is the return on investment you probably have never even started a few projects so stop this concept of big upfront commitment let us start a concept of innovation accounting where come up with an idea prove the idea works with something called a minimum viable product and then take it further and this leads to meaningful innovations you always have a friction you always a friction between reality and fictions that you always see a reality 
big upfront commitment is a fiction whereas mvp is a reality and by doing this mvp you can pivot or persevere the right directions thereby better financial spend often we ask no matter whatever happens why do marwadi business is always focused how can they always make profit i was recently listening to a wonderful video by dr pawan soni and he says that the, one of the most important thing that they focus is on financial spend financial discipline and the passion in which they work these are the two important things and financial discipline is how this is how you can bring the spend discipline in your portfolio now let's have a relook at the organization then then how should we organize ourselves instead of focusing on departments let us start looking at a flow of value from our customer point of view let's start looking at something called operational value streams that is how the business operates it is business operational value streams and then we all know that if the business if the hotel has to confirm and confirm confirm a reservation to a to a potential uh, traveler who has booked a room then there are some systems that will do it for the hotel guys so there are systems that are supporting these operational streams and our job as r&d folks today is to make sure that we develop these systems and deliver value to business as lean says the only two important things that the development value streams will do is to make your operational value streams more profitable and tell you and, and uh, nurture what you call as usable knowledge so that the same knowledge can be used again and again again and again to build better systems let's talk a little bit about how we need to look at strategy and funding most in the coming days how does the strategy formation and funding looks like there are a few questions or something on the chat okay great so some benefits of organizing your portfolio around ability to deliver value not ability to deliver projects is stability the most important aspect today is to retain people and people will quit the team and when they quit the teams they quit along with the knowledge so in order to ensure stability you need to start thinking about value streams where people are fixed or people remain within the value streams so you are generating usable knowledge there it is also an opportunity for faster learning because the same set of people are working knowledge sharing and you can validate your hypothesis quickly because you have more brains working towards it and you can really understand faster the real customer needs quality productivity people with the same group working together there are no serious handoffs handoffs waste are greatly greatly reduced and hence you can you have an option to build quality in the system because all people relevant to the quality end to end are a part of your group and finally the most important is your financial spend the budgeting it makes it linear come up with meaningful strategic agility change strategies quickly in order to meet the market demands and you can also shift budgets in the market to meet it okay how do you visualize your portfolio excel has given a excellent model to visualize your portfolio it's it's a beautiful model to understand how your portfolio should look like this is a simple example it talks about the first part that talks about is what products are we developing and why should customers buy our products that's the question this answers the second answer is what resources and capabilities we have to develop these products and the third row section talks about how can we sustain our business and essentially answering these three gives you what is called as a strategy now you apply these strategies to understand how we need to invest right if you have to live a happy life if you have to live a happy life you should be happy today and you should be happy tomorrow that gives you a very meaningful and happy life if you are happy today and if you don't know how to be happy tomorrow it creates anxiety this exactly happened to nokia and kodak they were very happy today they didn't even realize that tomorrow they became unhappy and often you see the ceo of the nokia once said in his last speech he said we did not do anything wrong at the same time certain things were not done right either 
So what is it? As an organizational portfolio, you need to visualize your horizons of investments. Horizon one is giving your maximum benefit. In the COVID situation, focus on horizon one. Keep your horizon folks one folks happy because they give the greatest profits on cash flow. Horizon two is upcoming opportunities. And horizon three is new business initiatives that you can think of. Now, horizon two, whatever was horizon two in January cannot be horizon two today. Whatever was in horizon three can never be horizon three today. If you do not have an ability to quickly change strategy in your portfolio, then where are we heading? We are happy today. That means life is happy today. We have a broken limb for tomorrow. If you have to lead a happy life and move to a better place, take care of life and your limb. Both have to be healthy. Then only you can make sure that your investment reap fruits. So how do you create your strategies? Business drivers, your mission, vision, mission, core values, distinctive competence. What is with me which the competitors do not have? Or what is that the competitors have which I don't have? What are the financial goals and where am I in the portfolio context? You consider all of this today, today's condition you need to consider and think, what should I do in the next quarter, not next year? Next year, we don't know the situation in the next two months now. We don't know what's going to happen. If there is going to be a complete lockdown again, economy will go for a toss. So we have no idea. So please do not plan for more than three months. That is the beauty of the PI cadence. It gives you an opportunity four times in a year to change your plans. So let's, talk, let's understand a little bit about strategy. We all know that Coke is, this Cola is the master, is the leader in the Coke industry, was the leader in the Coke industry. There was a company called Pepsi who wanted to beat Coke. So had they decided to introduce Pepsi directly, they would have taken Coke directly on the market. Chances are there that Coke would have drank Pepsi. When many big organizations eat small organizations here, Coke will drink Pepsi. But Pepsi was very intelligent. They did not do that. They did something called as an offensive strategy. And what is an offensive strategy? Opposite of defensive strategy. So they said, we introduced 7 which is white in color, which is opposite of Coke. And they said, Coke is dark, 7 is white. It's a lemonade, transparent, try it. People started thinking, yes, it's transparent, it's lemonade, probably it's good. People started doing it. After they had captured some amount of idea with Coke, they introduced Pepsi. And this is called flanking strategy. And they said, no, I am not a Coke because I'm sweeter than Coke. And I am not a 7-Up because I'm a different color from 7-Up. Look how Pepsi captured the market. This is called flanking strategy. And there are some players who don't care for any of this. And that is Red Bull. Who cares? I don't care for any of my competition. I have my own marketplace. So if your organization cannot think like this at a strategy and the portfolio, then do you really think you can capture the market? No. Let's talk about a uh, bike industry. At one point in time, Bajaj automobiles were competing with Hero Honda CD100, which at Hero Honda was the, the what do you say, the unique selling proposition of Hero Honda was its fuel uh, fuel economy. Fill it, shut it, forget it. Hero Honda CD100. I hope you guys remember that ads that we were getting. But Bajaj was creating scooters, Hamara Bajaj. So they tried to directly take Hero Honda on, in a defensive way. But the market said, Hero Honda is Hero Honda, Bajaj, you're scooters guys, you're best in scooter, you can't come to bike. So they took an offensive strategy. They said, if you want to go, get, go and buy a fuel economy bike, go to Hero Honda CD100. But if you want a bike which is definitely male, girls will get attracted, they come sit to you, and you want a jazzy vehicle, come to us. We have a definitely male Pulsar 150cc. Suddenly you see everything changed. And then they introduced the Discover. And that Discover is not Hero Honda because it is 110 cc. Discover is not uh, even uh, uh, Bajaj Pulsar. It is not even Pulsar. So they created a new market for themselves. And they called Mileage Kanaya Satya. There is a gorilla market as well. And that is Royal Enfield. 
timeless design and dependability they don't come into any of this they have their own market so if you cannot strategize them it's probably a wrong idea and ability to change strategies quickly every 3 months you need to change your strategy otherwise we are going to die in the next 6 months organizations will suffer so how do you understand your position to a swot swot talks about your internal strength your internal weakness your external opportunity external threat talk about swot and then how do you build your how do you based on the strategy based on your current condition do a toss toss is nothing but threat opportunity weakness and strength you put the two kind of take these combinations external opportunity internal strength what can i do external threat to internal strength what can i do external opportunity to internal weakness how do we overcome how to use this opportunity though we are having some weakness we come up with ideas come up with multiple ideas you can get multiple ideas in these four quadrants build those ideas and then you would explore multiple possibilities evaluate options and then build your new portfolio your for new portfolio is an arc like this see this is your current state you come up with multiple ideas which is divergent in nature now each idea will give a new portfolio look and then you converge them to make your new portfolio that's your vision the journey from your current portfolio to the new portfolio creates your portfolio vision and you need to do this very very fast and very very often so identify epics based on this you identify epics epics are not projects epics are great initiatives or ideas right you realize your epics and now you have to maintain flow otherwise uncontrollably you will start working so safe gives an excellent tool called a portfolio kanban where you can make flow you can do the most important for the co co post covid sessions how you need to do with this flow you can also introduce a concept called innovation accounting with innovation accounting what you do you don't develop the whole product and then they say hey this works this doesn't work you develop something called minimum viable products mvp you build an mvp you push it to the market you validate your mvp only when your mvp is successful you continue to persevere it otherwise we pivot directions this gives you a huge huge money saving option in the conventional management you assumed it will work it was a wishful thinking here it's a market feedback based opportunity driving driving opportunity through real time market feedback and you need to pivot don't keep on investing money the moment you know market doesn't like it cut it off just stop investment on it i know you've lost some money but it's not just lost you've learned a lot of lessons as well so how do we create instead of creating a fictitious business cases that we used to write for projects which we have never seen we write epic only statements it's a very interesting way and look at this epic for who the is a that unlike our solution isn't this a elevator pitch so you're trying to write an epic in a wonderful elevator pitch which means to say that you really do not spend much time in writing something fictitious you spend time in writing something very realistic what is an mvp then what what do you think is an mvp every chris in his book defines mvp as that version of the new product which allows a team to collect the maximum amount of validated learning about the customers with the least effort if amazon were to do an mvp in india what would they do search for books that are most commonly used i would just go for title search and author search add it to the shopping cart no other functionality of the cart cash on delivery no other payment options and all other tracking can be done through phone inquiry the only objective measurement is are people buying books if people are buying books then you proved your hypothesis that amazon works if not you'll have to relook at your hypothesis how do you know some of the leading indicators people are really searching on the books on the site and they're staying on the site for more than 5 minutes otherwise we click a site we close the site that's not a real indicator people are buying books people for asking for more books these are some good indicators that you can think of that 
people are really interested. These are what I call as the real metrics. The real metrics. All the likes what you get in LinkedIn, they are not metrics at all. They are, these are the actionable metrics. People are taking action to generate these metrics. All others are just like vanity metrics. They don't give you any positive feedback. But what is an MVP? Let's assume that you are in a business of separating these lemons based on the size. You are planning to develop a huge mission and you want to make sure that people really understand how to create MVPs. How do you create an MVP? Let's look at how do we create MVP. Just give me a minute. You see that? What was the investment for this? What is the investment that they have done for this? Two sticks, that's it. A little bit of engineering here and there. With the bare minimum cost, do you see how wonderfully we can develop, uh, how wonderfully we can actually develop the concept of minimum viable product? This is what we have to do. Come up with the most basic idea that you can prove your hypothesis. Now, if you can develop a machine on this hypothesis, it can definitely work. Also, another important metric is, are people buying this idea? If people can invest on your idea, man, you've done your MVP. That's, that's, that's a proof that your MVP is going to be a successful product. Also, I don't know how many of you heard this concept called as phantom limb experiment. There are many folks who lose their hands and legs as a part of accidents. For a, for a very, very long duration of time, they always believe, believe that they have these legs. They feel like as if they're walking in two legs. They get itching on their legs. And we wanted to make sure that the people realize they don't have their limbs anymore. So a group of doctors came up with a brilliant idea to do a brain surgery. Imagine, brain surgery is so costly and in the and brain is so complex as well. In the process of making surgery, you may even cut out a few things and make sure that the guy doesn't able to do anything later. It's a costly affair. An Indian doctor came up with a brilliant idea. He said, whenever you get itching on your hand, come and start in front of the mirror. Now you realize you don't have a limb. Automatically the itching goes. So this is called a phantom limb experiment. Look at the MVP here. It's a mirror. It's just a simple mirror. And this mirror proved that the solution works. So you don't have to do brain surgeries, friends, to prove something works. A small mirror, a small, what you call in Indian language, jugad. Let's do that realistic jugad to make sure that it works. A little bit on something called governance. We have spoken about all of this, but let's about governance. Now, the beauty of lean portfolio management is its ability to manage its dynamic funding. PI planning, a lot of people make fun of PI planning I've seen. What is the point about it? Well, PI planning is such a wonderful cadence. It gives you an amazing opportunity to reflect on how your organization is moving. And at that boundary, you can take strategic decisions. So if you are having a PI, four PIs in an year, when I mean, assuming that one quarter is a PI, and you've got four opportunities to take great decisions to build a great future. If required, do it more frequently. Who is preventing you from doing it? But of course, it comes with a little bit of a transaction cost as well. But ability to alter budgets is what gives the lean portfolio management. It's what you call as, in, in Sanskrit, we call it as the arrow of Ram, the most powerful weapon. And this is the most powerful weapon. Also, 
we don't we don't prioritize these epics based on uh, some uh, some jargons no we go with something called as economic prioritization we always look for something called cost of delay something that we can do with the minimum duration of time and then we prioritize it and don renston in his book says in this entire modern world if you really want to prioritize something quantify the cost of delay what is cost of delay what is the amount that i am going to lose if i delay my my feature beyond a particular point in time in the market if you all seen this movie uh, called prahar i'm sure you have seen it in this movie uh, nana patekar is sitting in a slum and uh, dipul kapadia comes to get a bowl of water get a in a barrel of water she comes before hand the water comes at 8 o'clock she comes at 7:45 he laughs at her and she waits till 8 o'clock just before water starts coming in somebody else would come and say i need a quick amount of water can i please take it from you and by the time she, her turn comes the water stops and he says waqt ke pehle aao kuch nahi hoga waqt ke baad aao kuch nahi hoga sahi waqt par aana hai that is what is cost of delay you have to, you can, there is no point releasing a feature ahead of time there is no point releasing a feature uh, on a later time you need to release features at the right time and that is what is cost of delay and we use economic prioritization model here it's not based on anybody's thought process or anybody's brain it is a scientific way of dealing with prioritization and this is done in the portfolio the parameters of the elements of cost of delay we focus on user value business value we focus on time criticality and we also focus on is this something that is reducing a risk or is this opportunity creator for us opportunity enabler for us so we use three these important cost of delay parameters to define if your organization has a fourth parameter put it no problem it makes your it makes even more great tool to define your prioritization process so this is an example of prioritization process but it also gives the another important aspect is forecasting how do you forecast in epic how do you forecast a project like you have multiple ways of forecasting a project here we go with what we call as realistic forecasting which means to say that you take a feature that is already been developed you break up you break up your feature, your uh, epics into features and then you do a kind of a fibonacci what we call a story point estimation and come up with larger epics with these epic sizes which is coming up with some real data that you have in the system not really go wrong even if it go wrong it's okay because these are large epics you may not be able to do all the features of those epics maybe you may stop doing it halfway that's fine but the most important aspect is it can tell you based on your arc velocity it can tell by when you can realize this epic you get the you get almost a realistic view of when you can realize this epic and finally some lean portfolio management performance some excellent opportunities employee engagement customer satisfaction productivity we struggle to really think of productivity for us productivity is still lines of code number of features no productivity is more of average reduced feature cycle time when did the customer give an idea what's our productivity level to deliver this idea to market self assessments are there to continuously improve the portfolio time to market how many times you hit the market to before realize that you are doing the right thing and our ability is to increase the frequency now quality you can always look at a portfolio and say that what was the defect at the beginning of the pi what's the defect at the end of the pi draw a trend you will get to know your quality metrics of course strategy ability to quickly realize if the strategy works is only possible if you have a lean portfolio management mindset so building a lean qms is also important as a part of it especially with the post covid ways where you have to do things really really fast having a mindset of a uh, waterfallish qms i'm telling you it's it's not a slow poison it's cyanide it will kill the it will kill the system instantaneously so you will have to think of how to build a lean qms please use the the knowledge of the quality guys they have tremendous knowledge and use them to build a lean qms model so what next 
what is it we have to do so let's understand from science we are all running through covid covid states obviously medics medical and medical sciences are of priority but can we spend some time to understand what is this challenge all about let's understand what is a disease a disease is something that will not allow you to sit in ease displeases comfort opposite is discomfort so anything that will not make you to live in ease is called a disease how do we know that an individual has a disease symptoms only through symptoms are we seeing in the newspaper if you have cough cold breathing difficulty and irritation in the throat probably you have covid problems irritation that is what are symptoms now when you see the symptoms obviously you think of cause why is this disease that has come to me why why am i seeing these symptoms often when we talk about cause we talk about two types of causes one is called external cause one is called internal cause external cause is called exogenous cause it is outside of the human body look at organizations like tcs apple m&m google facebook the market conditions for these companies and all other companies are the same but even in these conditions they thrive how come that means it is not the external cause it's an internal cause this is what we call as endogenous cause root cause internal cause or the fundamental cause so there is something happening in the body swine flu why about swine flu covid problem maharashtra has the highest number of covid cases but not everybody in maharashtra is infected why so there is only a few people who gets infection and not others that means there is something in the body that is doing this and that is what in corporate world we call as a business model or if you really want to understand you need to understand the constitution of the body that is called systems thinking you need to apply systems thinking to come up with a business model and what happens is that there are only a few people who are not getting this problem compared to others so you need to focus on what is not in common with you all of us have some common issues but something that is not in common is creating me to become separate so that is what you need to focus on that defines your individuality that means probably you have more resistance so that is why you are not being attacked by these covid problems and in order to really understand what is it you need to understand the ability of your organization to become vulnerable and then decide what to do that's called organizational vulnerability and if you want to survive in covid times you need to build something called immunity so all the doctors that are telling today is take ayurvedic medicine take herbs the indian herbs gives immunity ladies and gentlemen if we cannot build immunity in our organizations covid not only kills humans it will kill corporates also so the most important aspect is build immunity in the system today and how do you build immunity you will have to take the right ingredients from now so we saw what next but what is really next is important remember post covid era will not be the same as pre covid era it is not possible by the way this this uh, whatever i give i need to give credit to uh, mr rajiv bajaj the md of bajaj auto limited it is his understanding that i am sharing so as dr pavan soni one of the greatest orators that i have seen said intelligence and discipline are orthogonal you need to be disciplined though you are intelligent today you need to be disciplined in your portfolio disciplined spend disciplined ideas and you need to be more disciplined we are intelligent i agree and that's why he says intelligence and discipline are orthogonal they are 90 degrees opposite to each other what brings a cultural change in this stressful world he says routines and i said disciplined routines brings your cultural change we all believe that the most one of the most uncorrupt organization or incorrupt organization in our country is the indian armed forces and even in spite of all these changes look at the way how they are fighting for the nation in the borders they don't care for anything so what gives that extra patriotism patriotism to them there are a lot of things but one thing is routines every day they sing the national anthem and that removes lot of negativity every day can we do a daily stand up that's a routine 
over a period of time these disciplined routines can change the culture in the portfolio what about the kind of people we need to hire as it changed post covid of course sachai ryo honda who was one of the founders of honda said that we hire people who are seen trouble if you have not seen trouble in your life you have not tried anything risky and if you have not tried anything risky you cannot help organizations in crisis i'll tell you one of the biggest challenges that the portfolio today is, has its ability to communicate the purpose again dr pawan soni gave a beautiful example about his uh, experience in wipro he said that he was in wipro once they all went from bangalore to hyderabad to meet a client meeting and in this client meeting they, they there was a vp of their client of the business who came and gave a presentation they were expecting huge presentations with numbers but to take them for a surprise he showed them a video the video had a lady sitting and watching a television in uk a very a really old lady and suddenly she smelt some lpg or the gas leak she picks up the phone calls up the department and says i see a problem somebody receives the phone at the other end and says don't worry we will send you somebody immediately and he said they send people immediately people immediately come in and within 3 minutes or 5 minutes the problem is resolved and he says why i showed you this video was the folks the lady called someone the guy who received the call, received the phone was using a wipro software the guy this guy such somebody nearest to the house of the uh, of the customer that was through a wipro software and this guy came and fixed the problem that was through a wipro software so what you do is not software save lives i i felt this is probably the best way of telling the purpose you need to constantly sense your purpose we also pawan dr pawan soni also says that we need to develop the culture of forgiveness or permission hosur which is about 50 kilometers from bangalore has this tanish tata's gold uh, gold manufacturing center they prepare all this melting of smelting of gold there for a period of time these crucibles that they use for gold they kind of melt they kind of become very hard and rigid so what happens when they become hard and rigid they are thrown also they become weak so they are disposed but there is lot of gold still stuck in these crucibles so they tried a lot of ways of to do but nothing worked so they just threw it to them in the junkyard an young engineer comes talks to his neighbor who has a road roller he gives him 200 rupees rent per day gets the road roller rolls it on all of this and crushes it into a powder and he generated 4 kg of gold had he given had he written a letter to the chairman said that i am going to get a road roller and do all of this chairman would have said sorry it's not allowed now it is better to ask forgiveness rather than asking permission hire people who are daring enough to do something different and he also said that there is a great opportunity for entrepreneurs to be hired in corporates because as an entrepreneur i have failed i know how it is failure i know how to overcome failure as mark zuckerberg says a good engineer is worth than more than 100 average engineers now is the time to think how to retain good engineers in your organization so with this workshop you might have got a tool set might have developed a skill set but it is you and your organization who should change your mindset nobody can change your mindset other than you so if you want to learn more about lpm the the wonderful way of changing your organization working with lean portfolio concepts and thinking here is a guy whom you need to contact anup is my respected colleague he is from sales talk to him if there is an if there is a real interest to learn lpm i am there to teach you what lpm is all about right so any questions do we have any questions on the uh, on right. the q and a yes yes anand and there are a couple of questions which i guess there is one in the q and a box and i'll read it for you yeah um i don't know who asked this question but it says that what are the actions need to be planned when strategy goes out of control or there is no other business available for the company to look at how does lpm help here that's a it's a great question huh? there are many organizations now like 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 pranjal said about 
uh, which was which was the company you said uh, Pranjal, which are laid off people, that taxi Herds. company. Right, Herds. Herds. Yes. Why is Herd not thinking about Plan B? Why is Herd not thinking about Horizon Two? Why are they not thinking? They were happy with running taxi business. They were getting enough money. So it is not as I told you. It's not enough that you are happy today. You have to be happy tomorrow. To do happy tomorrow, you have to do your homework today. You have to start digging the earth if you really want to grow plants. You just can't throw seeds and expect them to grow. No, it doesn't go. You have to put your efforts. You have to come up with a strategy of where the organization has to go through. It is very important that you have to understand how the organization has to go through. As as I said, Dr. Pawan Soni is another important person whom I strongly respect a lot for his ideas. He said once upon a time. Millions and millions of generations of years before, the hand had five fingers, and this what you call thumb, which has become orthogonal to your main finger today, was actually a part of your existing finger. For some reason, it dropped. It dropped, dropped, dropped over generations and became a thumb. Now, what happened with this thumb, which has become orthogonal? We were able to hold things properly. We were able to hold things. we were able to hold weapons we were able to kill but we had to communicate that we are killed something back into your tribe you have to communicate but we did not know how to communicate so we started to talk in order to talk you need to have your you need to have your backbone you need to have your spine so we started to get up we we started to get up then we started to talk when we started to communicate what we are today is all because of this thumb the thumb fell down so can you put your organization's thumb orthogonal today you will get an answer for what's next unless we put our thumbs orthogonal nothing is going to work which is opposite if not 180% one sorry 180 degrees at least 90 degrees you need to start thinking orthogonal yeah and i just can remember another example which i came across recently one of the organizations that i work with and they had a bunch of hr and now given that they are not hiring they had couple of options that whether they fire their recruiters or they do something else with them and i really liked what they did because they actually moved them to sales because they were already in the business of selling the organization right they were going through the leads and generating the leads and going through them and helping um recruit the right talent now they were cross trained on other products and services which the organization offers and they moved to sales so that's another i'm pretty sure as you know uh, as anand alluded to that there's always a plan b i'm pretty sure there will always be a plan b all right i think there's one more question which i see in the chat window um um this is by nawaz but uh he asked that what approach safe suggests if operational value stream is not optimum you must say simple the biggest challenge as human beings we saw, we see is ability to identify problems we always think hey it takes 10 days to do something challenge it why is it 10 days why can't it be 5 days start challenging it don't challenge it is why is it 10 days why can't it be half a day then you will fail the challenge the day you challenge it why can't it be 9 days when you get to 9 why can't it be 8 days when you get to 8 why can't it be 7 days probably you come to a point which says that uh, two days is optimum i can't do beyond the two so constantly you need to look for improvements and the the problem is not to improve the problem is to find where to improve but once you find definitely you will improve so you have to keep your eyes open to look for these operational value streams and see where inefficiencies are there that's exactly what you call value stream mapping if you can do a value stream mapping you will realize that the system efficiency is so bad that by simply improving the efficiency of your operational value stream maps you probably can save millions of dollars in your organization yeah there's another question which has just popped up uh, he asked that what are the best actions to be taken when the outcome of horizons is not giving giving to select the opportunities i don't know if i understand or if i read it correctly pivot what are the best actions to be taken yeah i would say okay. pivot pivot is the answer right. if you think something is not working don't put money there try to do something else and that's the beauty of lean portfolio it it 
things up. If you can look at this slide that I showed here, this is probably the most powerful slide of this entire presentation. This is the most powerful slide. <coughs> you have your current portfolio. You know, based on your strategy, based on your toes, you come up with multiple ideas. And then for each idea, you plot a futuristic portfolio. And then you ask a question, can we achieve this futuristic portfolio? If the answer is yes, come up with the picks, do MVPs, and then become successful. If the answer is no, pivot, come up with new idea. The more ideas you bring in, the greater is your opportunity to become successful. We have to be idea and to generate idea. Let's become Google. Don't give answers. Google simply asks questions. You want anything in Google, you ask a question to Google. You ask a question. Let us ask questions. What is that we need to do? And we can definitely get answers probably better than Google. Perfect. Um, I don't see any more questions over here. Okay. If there are no more questions, I just want to leave you all with one important statement that is taught in the Indian Army. Everybody, every teacher, every coach, and every instructor tell this. He says, Apna kismat par barvasa mat karo, apni kabaliyat par barvasa karo. This is the time for you to learn new things. Nature has given us an opportunity to reboot our lives. This COVID will not come back again in life. And life after COVID is not going to be, be the same as it was before. Now is the time to think of your careers, think of your futures, and start learning new concepts. We did not ask management's help or organization help to get married. We did not ask organization's help to check whether we can produce babies. Why do we need to ask management to check whether we want to invest in our careers? Time for investment and you will definitely be after the COVID situation is handled. So if there are any questions to me, this is my number, this is my email, drop and I'll be glad to answer your questions. Right? So. Yeah, there are a few questions coming in, I think, but we are over our time box. So uh, appreciate maybe all one of you last question. have the questions. Okay. All one right. Last so, question. all right. Maybe I'll go through this one. Um, the last one is it's on the chat window. How does value realization being tracked through LPM in terms of story points, lean budgeting, commercials, etc.? Okay. This is like Shankar Madhavan song. Right? It's a very big one. We need to break it. How does value realization yeah. being tracked through LPM? in terms of story points, lean budgeting, commercials, etc. Value realization is not through story points. Story points is just an, a tool to become more predictive, that's all. The estimation of story points is all about predictability. You're, today you're talking about value realization and budgeting. Well, we use story points for budgeting. I'm not saying no, but science behind story points is to become more predictable. And if you see the slide here, it also talks about predictability here. So, see here, this slide actually talks about being more predictable. So it says, this enabler has 2000 story points. If I give it to ARC2, probably in two PIs, I can complete it. It's all about predictability. But you can also start thinking about story, with, with story points, with some past history, you can start thinking of how much you need to spend you come up with something called cost per story point, and then you'll be able to deliver some uh, forecasting metrics. But budgets is more related to something called run the business, grow the business. That's a discussion for some other day. How do we actually do it? But these are all some important concepts we talk in the LPM class. Okay, I think we have crossed the time. Uh, if there yeah. is anything that you would like to talk, let me again share my email ID. This is my email ID and number. If you want to share, if you want to ask a questions, feel free to uh, drop a mail and I'll be glad to answer your questions. And if there are, in, and I think let's close this because we've already overshot the time. And thank you very much for joining this webinar. I hope it makes sense to all of us to understand Life is not the same pre-COVID, post-COVID. Organizations will not be the same. Obviously, strategies cannot be the same. We have to change. So 
let's take the message and let's uh, let's be safe let's start thinking positive and let's be great let's grow india to the next level thank you very much jai hind thank you anand thanks everyone for joining thank you very much okay. bye bye